Okay, we're here in the uh, camp office, and uh, this is where kind of the uh, control central here of the project. And one of the things that we like to do as scientists in the field is try to say and take a look at the first initial data and make guesses and and speculate about what we found so far. And what we can what we have here on the wall, if you if you just look across the wall here, are um, some of the first printouts of the one property that's being measured in the cores, and that's magnetic susceptibility. And we know from the magnetic susceptibility record that it gives us kind of an index of climate change in a rough way, that the magnetic properties of the sediments themselves um, are telling us something about warm periods and cold periods. Um, they don't tell us how warm or how cold, but because of the um, intensity or the uh, particularly the concentration of magnetite, it tells us something about some of the processes going in the lake. The first set of wiggles here that uh, if we just keep these very simple and think that up when the wiggle is up it's a warmer period and down is maybe a cold period, a cooler period in the lake history, we've literally studied more or less uh, something in the range of something like this much of the record. This is what we studied before and we, what we know from these wiggles is something about these warm and cold periods. So what we've collected here in the last uh, month or two, in fact, is everything you can see wrapped around uh, the wall. And of course, the, the um, challenge now will be to correlate the two or three boreholes that we have and then also evaluate all of the other physical properties and um, organic matter and so on that we can, and, and fossils that we can find in here. So um, this much of the record, uh, if we just look at uh, the um, upper part, roughly to about here. This represents something about 400,000 years uh, in this range, somewhere in here. So you kind of get an idea that we're really looking back through time, potentially, um, and we hope, uh, back three and a half million years eventually to get to the bottom of the record. So the, the style of the wiggles here and the, shall we say, the frequency up and down the shape of these wiggles we can match from one core. This is uh, 1A, and this is uh, 1B here, two cores next to each other. We can actually use these to correlate the two cores together and pick out matching peaks. And this means that we've got a replication of the record in two adjacent boreholes, which is very good. And um, this matching, some people call it wiggle matching. Uh, more formally, we like to think, it of, think of it as what we call event stratigraphy, where we're matching certain climatological events from one, um, one core to another. One of the reasons that we take uh, two adjacent boreholes is um, to actually make sure we get the complete sequence. As we're drilling down, there are, of course, core breaks, and we don't want, don't want to miss any material between core breaks. So if we take cores that are overlapping in this way, we can make sure that we have the record reproduced on both sides. And here's a perfect example here where we have a gap in the record where we lost recovery in this section, but in the adjacent borehole, we were actually able to capture that here. So you can see another gap in this portion of the record where we lost some of the material in the core, but we were actually to capture it here. So we're actually able to fill in the gaps by having two adjacent sequences, and then we have one composite record that makes up the entire story. So the, the data that we see here on the wall is, is exciting to us as first results, but it's only really the beginning of a very long process which will involve uh, 70, 80 scientists, many, many graduate students from the United States, Germany, Russia, and Austria working on a whole number of proxies to really put the story together. And this is going to take us several years, um, certainly four or five years minimum, to really tease out as much information in here. There's a wealth of information. And it's just the start of this, um, the, the discovery process of what we've actually found here. And um, we're going to find surprises, and that's part of, the, uh, part of why we're here, is to learn more about this history of the Arctic. This is Tim Martin, 2009 Polar Trek teacher, talking with Dr. Julie Brigham-Gretty at Lake Elgigigan in northeast Siberia.